my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. And I have the most amazing guest today. This is my beautiful and amazing mother-in-law, Melanie. And I got her to read my very favorite book that I read this last year. And so um, I'm really excited to talk about it. This is A Place for Us by Fatima Farina Mirza. This book was about a family that lived in the States, but they were from India and they're a Muslim family and they have very strong um, spiritual traditions um, that both parents grew up as and as they're, chill, as they're raising their children, they teach them the same principles and it's how each of their children respond to those. Yeah, I thought that it was really just kind of a book about family life. I mean, I think every family has elements of these things. You know, the, what values get passed on to your kids? What happens when they don't live according to those values? How um, people grow and change over time? And I thought it was a really like honest and true look of um, kind of family life and, you know, keeping true to your culture. And like, there were a lot of elements in this. Yes, absolutely. There were, um, family dynamics with each of the children and with the parents and the children. It was exactly a story about um, family relations and how um, they change and grow. So I thought the structure of this book was super interesting. So it starts out by um, having kind of a chapter talking about a wedding. And then we have another big section of the book that is kind of flashbacks to the family's life. Growing up, you kind of get uh, not super in chronological order, but it's how you would remember your life, you know, little snippets that come together. And then after we kind of get all the background, we go back to the wedding. And then after we get that little section that talks about the wedding, we get a letter from the father to his son. And that takes up the rest of the book. So it's kind of divided into sections, but they all come together really beautifully. So, Melanie, what did you think of this book as a whole? You are welcome to just tell me it was the worst book you've ever read. It's okay. <laughs> it's, well, I actually love books about, and shows actually about relationships. And so for me, it was a, a very, I, I loved the book actually, and yeah. would, you know, suggest it to others to read, but it, there's a lot going on with the different dynamics of the challenges that, that they face living in the United States. And so it was just interesting how each child reacted differently to those challenges. It was a very interesting book like with parenting and you could see that they had a very um, authoritarian type view. Everything was very rigid. Mm -hmm. You know, they had these values that they wanted to pass on to their kids, but they didn't have that little bit of wiggle room, like to yeah. let their kids grow and breathe. And you could see how that kind of hurt each of the kids individually. It kind of pushed them into separate boxes. Yeah. And um, I feel like in particular, the father was that way. Yes. Um, the mother was uh, had a little bit more a softer touch. And um, the children would often go to their mother to kind of balance out a little bit. So I found it very interesting. At a certain point, the mother is at the library trying to find books on parenting. And she's hiding those from her husband. Mm -hmm. And she wants to learn how to relate better to her kids. And she was worried that she would only come up, um, if she came across a passage that was really concerning, then she would bother her husband with it, but she was just gonna read the books for her own benefit. Like, what did you think of her kind of sneaky way of trying to become a better parent? Well, I felt um, a little bit sad about this part because um, I, to me, like she's trying to see how better, it, it was especially with Amar that she was having, you know, she just didn't know how to parent and was trying to find books how to parent him and the fact that she didn't feel comfortable to let her husband know that she was reading books to help her improve and how to help parent him, I thought that was um, a sad thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and felt very restricting. So, you, so knowing that she felt restricted that way, you know for sure that the children felt restricted as well. well. 
And do you think that there was any sort of play into um, gender dy dynamics in their culture and in their home where she felt like she was responsible for that as the mother, but maybe she needed to leave the father. You could tell um, to do things on his own. Um, you could tell that the girl in the book, the daughter was very, um, she really did it, had struggles with the gender dynamics in her yeah, family. Absolutely, yes. And do you think <clears throat> that some of the parenting was also a problem with maybe some of the gender dynamics. Absolutely. Yeah. It was definitely there with the parents. Yeah. It was there and you're right, the oldest daughter, she always felt like she was trying to get the same respect that uh, that the brother was receiving. The brothers were receiving. Well, and I mean, I think that those things to a certain extent in every family you get some of those yeah. things even if you feel like no we're we're we are are so loving and we're so fine like there still is going to be some sort of gendered expectations because we live in a society that really pushes those kinds of things yeah and so i think that those kinds of struggles are very universal even if they are culturally specific as well right right and since in some instances and especially in this one they're, they were very firmly in place yes where, they were explicitly stated yes and so in other like I think you're right, all families have different um, variations of this. The uh, mother in the book is trying to teach religious stories to her kids. She talks about sin as being like a permanent marker. Mm -hmm. And she says that, um, a yes, it's a permanent stain. With every sin, the, our heart grows darker and darker until it is so heavy and black, it cannot tell good from evil anymore. It cannot even tell that it wants to be good. And then of course at the end she says, of course, there is always the opportunity of asking Allah for forgiveness. One must be remorseful. But throughout the book, there's instances where, especially the oldest son, he feels like his heart has become that black place. Mm -hmm. And in the way that it was taught didn't focus on the redemption and the changing and that people make mistakes. It was that you must avoid making mistakes at all costs because you will... Your permanently heart. damage yourself right yeah, your heart will be black and it will be heavy and and I and I I think throughout the book that wasn't explained that we all make mistakes and we all have sins and there is a redemption for that we can re repent of those well, mistakes and, and sins are and like mistakes are essential you know like that's yeah. an important part of growing yeah. and learning and I think Part of the parenting that was a problem in the book is that it was very authoritarian they had um a very strict sense of what was right and wrong and they didn't give enough m room for um making mistakes and learning and growing absolutely yeah yeah so that was a, a hard thing and i i think um after reading this this book i feel like the parents truly loved their children and would do anything for their children for them to be happy you know uh people they loved them dearly and watched over them carefully but i i believe that they just did they didn't recognize these these particular things that were happening they didn't realize how they were affecting their children well and that's why i feel like this book was such a good human look at a family because nobody in this book was trying to be malicious or trying to um, do anything, you know, they loved each other. This yeah. family had so much love for each other, but the way that it was expressed didn't come across the right way and, mm -hmm. you know, mistakes were made. Um, I was really interested in the story of the shoes. So it, in the book, there is a story that's told from multiple perspectives across the book of a pair of shoes that the son really, really wanted. And his father told him that if he got 100% on his spelling test, he would get the shoes. And he studied and studied and studied, got 100%, was gonna get the shoes, but told his sister, oh, I wrote on the bottom of my shoe one of the words that was really hard for me, and I checked it after. I'd already written it, I, I wrote it correctly, but I checked it after. And she told the father, and then he didn't get the shoes. It was a yeah. It, she it the interesting thing is is she put it off like she didn't tell him immediately. Yeah. And she questioned whether she should even um, tell him, but 
in a weak moment when she felt like she wasn't being treated equally, she went and ratted him out. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was very interesting toward the end of the book. Um, we actually get the father's perspective of it and he was very disappointed. Um, it, of course, that his son had cheated, but when his daughter came to tell him, he wasn't disappointed in his son, he was disappointed in his daughter for, um, he says that, uh, to my surprise, I felt a deep disappointment, not with you, but with her. I had found comfort in knowing my children had obvious ties to one another, that he thought that they loved each other too much to rat each other out. Yeah. And I think that the problem that, I think it's part of that recurring problem of just not having a little bit of um, leeway, you know? Yes. No space to breathe. Mm -hmm. I have a good friend and she um, she read this book and she told me that um, something she learned is that, um, something she learned a long time ago from her parents is that when you are confronted with a situation like this as a parent, you need to look for a way um, always try to give your child a way out and a way to do the right thing. And if the father had maybe reacted with, oh, I'm disappointed that you cheated. If you go tell your teacher, we can still buy the shoes or found some way to, instead of being so rigid and set in his rules that he didn't have space for that compassion. Right. Or if he could have even listened to his son and say, dad, I did put it on the bottom of my shoe. I wrote the word down first and I just wanted to double check it. And when I double checked it, it was, I had spelled it right. Yeah, but it was still wrong to write it on the shoe. Like, but having, yeah. being able to have that discussion and um, I think just the parents maybe didn't give the space for those kinds of discussions right. to happen. It's interesting in the book um, concerning the shoes as well. Like the whole time I didn't ever realize like, so did Amar get the shoes or did he not? And it wasn't until the final, you know, the final third, yeah. how you're saying it's broken up into thirds, but that you find out that the father wishes that he had gone and got the boots for his son, yeah. which is kind of a sad moment for me when I realized that he hadn't gone to get those boots. He hadn't worked something out with his son so that he could get them. Yeah. Well, and I think it's so telling of just like normal family life that this was one instance this was one example in their lives it was but it meant so much to each of the children you know it really stuck in their heads it was told from multiple perspectives you could tell that that was an important moment in their family yeah. but it's a small it's a small example and it i think that in every family there are those little things that from the outside people would say that's not a big deal that's just one thing yeah but really influence how the family works together well, and there, you know, like you said, that was one instance that there were probably um, many instances, you know, over the years of, of similar things that happened, but didn't stand out in their mind as much. Um, but yeah, like you said, that was just a one time thing. But over the period of their lives, I'm sure that there were many, many things, instances similar to that type of thing. One of my favorite quotes from this book was um, just where at the wedding, and the father really, um, you can tell that he is finally finding a way to maybe express how he feels to his son a little bit better. And he says, listen to me, Baba held onto his arm. You can never be more wrong, Amar. We taught you one way, but there could be others. We don't even know, we can only hope. How many names are there for God? 99. He knew all of this by heart. Didn't that count for something? And are they all the same kind of name? No. Some contradict each other, remember? Didn't you just say to me, what if this is meant to show us more? What if we are meant to look closer? Amar nodded, wind rustled in the leaves. He sniffed and wiped his nose on his shirt sleeve. We will wait until you are allowed in, Baba said, as if to himself, I will wait. Um, he said, I don't think he created us just to leave some of us behind. Amar believed him, Amar wanted to. And I feel like this was a kind of a turning point in the book where the father was like, could really express maybe his feelings to his son a little bit better mm -hmm. and show that even though there have been these problems, he's gonna be there for his son. And maybe um, expressing that there is more flexibility than they have shown necessarily in their family life. I don't know. Yes, I feel like the father's um, 
oh, after all these years and seeing how each of his children had been, you know, the direction of their lives had gone, he realized that um, he hadn't taught the softer part of of God. Um, he loves all of us and he he wants us to return to him. And so he has all these facets of his of his existence of how he can love and accept people for who they are. And so his father is realizing this and he's explaining this to Amar and he wants him to know that he realizes that now and that he wants to be that type of father for his son. How did you, what did you think about the ending? Everything, I mean, spoiler slightly, but everything <laughs> doesn't end up perfectly rosy. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Um, I was, I had the ending that I wanted it to be. Yeah. And I, can I say what I wanted that to be? Sure. Okay. So I wanted, I wanted um, Amar and his father to be able to mend their ways with one another and to resolve some of the issues that they had had and to just to sit down, have a good conversation and to show that they were making, little by little, making changes towards becoming closer to one another. And it was, it, it was a little bit sad for me in a way that his father was writing these things he wanted Amar to know what he was thinking in his mind, but it kind of leaves you with the thought that they may never have that discussion together face to face, but it's something that's written down so that if, because if he's not around, his son can read it and, and know how he felt. Yeah. I mean, I think it was frustrating, but definitely more true to life that things don't always end up how they should. Yeah. There is one interesting thing I want to bring up. And at the wedding, um, he, the mother is saying to her husband, don't talk to Amar because she's afraid that if he talks to Amar, he's going to push him away again because that's kind of the pattern that has been happening throughout yeah. their relationship that he's kind of been pushing without realizing it. Or, I mean, maybe yeah. realizing, I don't know, but he's pushing Amar away by the way, he, the things he says to him and his, um, the way that he doesn't accept Amar for how he is. And so the mother forbids him to speak to Amar at the wedding. Yeah. And so at the very end when they can't find Amar so that they can get family pictures, the mother is really determined that she wants everybody to be there for a family picture. Mm -hmm. And it sounds similar to how I would probably be, honestly, because yeah, yeah. I love family pictures and I would, and when we're all together, I yep. would be pretty insistent on getting a family picture. So um, she finally tells her husband, will you go find Amar? Yeah. And so the beautiful part of that is, and the hard thing about that is, is that he, because of the condition he's in, he's been drinking and he's probably, it's not probably a good time for him to go get family pictures. Um, he doesn't go in and knows that he really can't go in um, yeah. for a family picture. But the beautiful thing of that is, is that the father and son have that conversation that you were talking about yeah. that shows that his father's heart is, is softened and he's starting to understand that everything's not black and white. Yeah. And that he can love his son um, no matter what he's doing, the choices he's making, he can love him for who he is. Yeah. I think that was one of the most important parts in the book. It really, I feel like it was everything kind of leading up to that. You get all the background of the perspectives of growing up, leading up to the wedding, and then you kind of get the tapering off, the kind of healing and reconciling um, yeah. with the father's letter toward the end, and everything kind of led up to that point where um, Ahmad and his father were able to talk mm -hmm. and kind of understand each other. Not that it fixed everything no but it but was healing could start yeah. Healing could start to take place because yeah. because they could see that there was a way for them to move towards each other instead of away yeah well, and I just loved this book I thought that it had so many wonderful things because I mean you and I are both religious and I feel like it's um interesting in family life to see you know, when certain people decide that they would don't want to go to church anymore, things like that, how 
you need to re reframe things in yes. your life and be able to understand that while other people make decisions, it's you still need to have that place of love and you need to. It, so I thought that it was an important one, um, an important book just for that. Like personally, yeah. I thought it was a yeah. really good one to just, you know, show that love towards everyone regardless of their life decisions, especially in family life. Yes, I agree with that. And and honestly, being a, a spiritual person like I am and uh, growing up with the beliefs that I have grown up in and I believe firmly in, it, it is very, very challenging. I could re relate with the father in so many respects of how difficult it was to see his children make choices that were um, contrary, 100% contrary to what what he felt like was a, the proper way to live your life. And so um, I could relate with that with my own personal life when I have seen um, decisions that have been made that are contrary to what I believe as well. But it's also a beautiful thing that we have learned in the church that we are to love all people. Yeah. And to show our love um, towards especially our family, but to those all around us. Um, well, and I think that it's this book really shows that the way that you teach and the way that you share um, your beliefs about God and uh, religion are very, it's very important because, for example, at one point he says that um, he's worried about his heart being black, right? Mm -hmm. He's worried that he's made so many mistakes, he can never come back from it. And he says, Hadia, do you think what Mama said about the heart has already happened to me? So many black stains that now it's just a dark seal, like nighttime descending and never lifting, like nothing can be done. And it says, she is shaking her head and his arm and is saying, forget your soul, Lamar. I'm worried about your body. Because he was having a substance abuse problem, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think that a lot of those things internalized can cause other problems externally, you know? And so, yeah. like, teaching that love and that, um, that power of change and that there's always hope is important because at a certain point, if you feel like you're not worth anything, you're going to make other destructive decisions, right? So, I and, if you, and if you feel hopeless, yeah, like if you feel like he, at that point, he was feeling <coughs> hopeless. He's like, do you just feel like my, my heart is so black that there's no turning back? Yeah. So he was feeling very hopeless at that point and, and to instill hope into your into your children's life in your family and and well, those around so you. So that when they come across things that aren't necessarily sins or whatever, but are just challenges in life that they feel like they can overcome them, you yeah. know, it, to give them more resilience instead of that hopelessness. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there was so much that goes into this book. I recommend it. Excellent. <laughs> Such a good book. It's a oh. it's a good read and it's worth all your time. Yeah, I, so I picked up this book toward the beginning of the year, and I, it has remained my favorite book of the year, and I actually purchased it, so if you know me, that's, uh, that means I must really love it, because I just don't buy books, so I just rent, I rent them. I check them out from the library. Yes. Rent them from the library. Rent <laughs> <laughs> them or listen to them on Audible, yes. This girl who wrote this book. She was like my age when she wrote this book. Wow. What? What have I done with my life? <laughs> That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to us chat about this book. If you have thoughts on this book, positive or negative, please leave them in the comments down below. And a special thank you to the lovely Melanie for <laughs> your welcome coming on my channel. <laughs> this is great fun, and I will see you all on the next one.